In the previous video, we had discussed about the IUPAC nomenclature. The three things that are required for the IUPAC nomenclature are the word root, the prefix and the suffix. So uh, now, in f uh, from now and after, you know, uh, for a couple of videos, we will be discussing about alkanes. So which means you're not going to be talking about compounds which have a double bond or a triple bond. We're only talking about alkanes and those which are probably branched. Okay, so first of uh, all, for a compound or for an IUPAC name of a compound, you need something called the word root. And the word root will give us the number of carbon atoms in the chain. So for the first rule that we need to follow is the longest chain rule. So as the name suggests, we will, the basic uh, compound, uh, the word root of the IUPAC name will be of the longest chain chain or that particular compound is a derivative of that particular long chain. So here the first compound you have two possibilities. Okay, the first one is this chain 3, 4, 5 and 6. So the first is you have 6 carbon atoms. Secondly, you also have 1, 2, three, four, five carbon atoms. So based on the longest chain rule, we need to select the chain which has six carbon atoms and not five carbon atoms. So just picking the longest chain. The second question, the second uh, compound, here you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine carbon atoms. Or it could have been one, two, could be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight carbon atoms. So obviously we will pick the nine carbon atoms only. Now let's assume this particular compound instead of just CH3, uh, it had CH2 and another CH3. Okay, then the number of carbon atoms over here would be 10 and then this would have been our main chain. Well, this would have not, I mean, that would have been the longest chain. Okay, so we will be taking this as the longest chain of that particular, for that particular compound. Here we have another one. So remember your main, so this is to show you that the main chain, that is the one we write, you know, horizontally, need not necessarily be the longest chain at all times. Okay, so the other, ex the next example over here is, here you have the first, second, third, fourth and fifth. Okay, so notice first what we're doing is we're just writing down the one which, you know, is present on the horizontal line. Okay, numbering it and then figuring out if the other one is probably longer than this one. Another chain could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, of course, 6 is a bigger number than 5. So, this chain has more number of carbon atoms. So, this will be our longest chain and this is not considered. And that particular methyl group will be considered the substituent Remember, I am not talking about the numbering of carbon atoms. I am just talking about the length of the chain. So this 1, 2, 3, 4 represents only the length for that particular chain. Just for you to understand that. The reason I say this is because the position of the substituent is also followed by numbering process. So this is just to show you the number of carbon atoms in each chain and what is the comparison to the uh, carbon atoms in the other chain which is possible. Now here there is another rule which needs to be remembered. Suppose you have two chains which are possible okay and both the chains have the equal number of carbon atoms then the one with the maximum number of substituents is selected. So here you have the possibility of two chains, right? So here you have um, one, okay. one, two, three, four, five, six, 
5, 6 and 7. Okay, that's chain number 1. We will call the one with the sink chain number 1. And then you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, this is chain number 2. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This is chain number 3. Now, all the three chains will have the same number of carbon atoms. The, that's 7, right? So, the let's consider the first one. Okay, that is this chain. Okay, notice the number of side chains. Here you have one side chain. Okay, and here you have another side chain. So, the number of side chains this particular set has are 2. Okay. Now, this is the second one. So, we are considering till carbon 5 and then goes downwards. So, carbon number 4 is at first carbon number 3 is attached to one side chain. Okay. And then you have 4 attached to another side chain. And then you have 5 which is attached to this side chain. So, there are three side chains which are possible for the second style of numbering. Now, when we consider the straight um, numbering, here the third carbon has one, fourth carbon has another side chain, fifth carbon has one more and sixth also has one, which means there are four side chains. Remember, I'm not talking about the length of the side chains or anything. I'm just considering this entire group which is added. So, for example, uh, for this carbon atom, this is the side chain. For this, this one will be. So, these are the side chains and there are four possible side chains in case of our third kind of numbering. And so, the third number, third type of numbering is what is considered the, you know, the one which will be used as the word root and the name will be given based on the sub various substituents and stuff like that we, we are not talking about that right now we're just telling to discussing about the longest chain rule so if you have two or three chains which are equal length then the one with which has the maximum number of substituents it is is selected Okay, so that is longest chain rule. Basically, as the name suggests, we are going to pick the longest chain rule. And if you have two chains which are possible, which are of the same length, then the one with the maximum substituents are is selected. Now, the next one is position of the substituent. And here is where numbering comes in. So, if you remember, we discussed that there has to be a number, I mean, we discussed that we, we have a prefix, we have a suffix and all that, okay. And generally, when you have a functional group, you need to give the number for the location where the functional group is present. In this case, we'll be talking about another alkyl group which is present. So here, let's assume this is the substituent, okay. And th we need to show in the name itself that like when the, when somebody looks at the name of that particular compound, they should know the position of the substituent is at this particular carbon. So the number is going to denote the number of the carbon atom to which that substituent is attached to. So here you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 carbon atoms. Okay, and for a substituent when a substituent is present we will be numbering them okay and this numbering is also called as a locant a locant is is basically the number which defines the position of that particular group so here there are two ways by which we can number our carbon chain one is one two three four five and six this is from the right to the sorry the left to the right side or we can do it one two three here we're not again we're not talking about the carbon length i'm talking about the numbering for us to show that this particular carbon atom is attached 
to that substituent so we will be using the the numbering we'll be numbering it in such a way that this gets a less number okay so the substituent should be present at a lesser number and so we will be considering this as the second position and not the fifth position so the substituent has to have a less number now let's consider this chain if we go 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 at the fifth carbon this methyl group is attached to and that is wrong so instead we'll be going 1 2 3 4 5 6 and the name of the compound is 2 methyl and since it's 6 carbon uh, carbon chain it's called 2 methyl hexane Okay, the, this shows, the two shows that the methyl group is present in the second position. Now, here, let's first figure out which is the longest chain. 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 is the horizontal one. Then you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, obviously, this chain is going to be our longest chain. Now, let's count... Uh, Okay, L listen, if you find it comfortable to write down the numbering on your, you know, right above your compound, then it, it and it makes sense for you to do that. If you find it easy for it, for naming the compound in the first place. So, let's write the numbering 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. Okay, and... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if you find it easy to number it and then write the name of the compound, it's fine. So here, if you notice, here you have two options. You, it can either be number five or it can be three. But we know that three is lesser than five. So this compound's name is 3-ethylhexane. Sorry, heptane because seven carbon heptans. So here you have, this is an ethyl group it, because it has two carbon atoms. This is a methyl group because it has one carbon atom. And this is the substituent. And so this is called as 3-ethyl heptane. So we've learned about two uh, rules right here. Uh, longest chain rule and the position of the substituent. Uh, for you to understand all of this in much more detail, you can, you know, first check out the video on the IUPAC nomenclature where we've done the basics and then come over here and then you'll be able to understand it much better. In the next video, we will be talking about the first point of difference rule. So do check it out.